actually practice. You know, the big when you big someone up, actually, you're gonna have to very quickly remember all of Guy's achievements and give him title and everything like now. Oh no! <laughs> Hello, Guy. You like to practice on the train, don't you? <laughs> I do. Uh, just to let you know we're, we are recording, so Fine. that's our intro right. you've just done. That's the intro, Guy Moore. Welcome to behind the billboard. Thank you very much, Hugh. Right, and Dan. We're, gonna, we're gonna have to say Guy Moore. A bit of a legend all around uh, for me on many. I was actually going through DNA D, just DNA D, looking for all your work, and it's page after page, and it's all, it's mostly brilliant billboards. You probably I mean, have your own book now, couldn't you? Your own DNA D book. There's so many references to your name in there. Uh, no, I do remember the time that I actually got quite frightened. I got in there 13 times when I was at Still Price Court, and wow. oh, Tony's there, kind of like party outfit on, and and I was kind of like my head in my hands on the desk. And he said, what's the matter with you? I said, what are we going to do next year? How do you <laughs> yeah. do that one? Where do we go from there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's very, that's a bit of a sort of Ferguson thing. Well, no, I'm going to football. Double down. Yeah, double down, because that was a long time ago. So yeah, Guy Moore, who I know, I worked with at Leah Burnett, had a great time there. Um, but you've just been every, I actually couldn't work out an agency you hadn't been at, but you did say BBH, you hadn't been. But you've worked at some of the, the best agencies um, and done some amazing work. So oh, thank, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for coming thank on. You. So you've come down from sunny Yorkshire. I have. Right? Yeah, I have. Yeah. So what are you doing up in sunny Yorkshire? Um, well, since COVID, if I'm honest, it kind of like, well, I think not just me, I think all of us, we kind of reevaluated our lives. Mm. And uh, I've got family up there. Um yeah. And, of course, now I'm not kind of commuting in and out of London all the time. So the times I do come into London, it's like a it's like a bit of a mini holiday for me, to be honest. Hence uh, your bucket and spade. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm now kind of out in the sticks. We all work remotely. I've yeah. got my own company now with Pete Brace Girdle. So what's uh, what is Creative Coalition? It's Creative Coalition, yeah. yes. Well, when did that start? A couple of years ago? That started almost two years ago. Right. Right. Almost two years ago. And how's it going? It's going very well. Yeah. This got... is Peter, Peter Bracegood, I've got to quickly say, big up Peter. He was on the bridge when we projected Gail Porter onto the House of Commons for the oh, was he? stunt. Yeah. And he was there. A man of steel. He is trying, a man of steel. He didn't end up in handcuffs. Wow. They, he kept saying, don't worry, no, we'll, we'll get off the bridge, your officer, don't worry. And then a the minute they, they said, right, stick it on again. <laughs> yeah, turn the camera on. Yeah, yes, brilliant. Turn it on. He's get good. the projection on so it. He told me all about that, by the way. Oh, he's a great lad. So you and him started your own... Your own gaff. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, and you've um, you've just fresh, fresh off the printer. You were telling me you've got some a billboard literally happening this week. Well, uh, it's happening as we speak. As we I speak. mean, as in, is it? It's touring the country. Wow. So, what is it for? Um, is the well, we did a campaign for a client, strangely enough, who um, going back to my thirteen times in the DNA D annual. Yeah. It was that particular client. All right. Who I rang up when you have your own agency, you know, I mean, you've got your own little black book and you think, not that mine's very thick at all by any means. <laughs> I'm dredging the bottom of it now. It's quality, um, not quantity. That's true. <laughs> so I rang her up and she was then, uh, she'd gone from looking after the blind to uh, trying to protect the world. Right. Uh, with, well, wow. she was R&IB. Is that what she she was, first no, London Association for the Blind it was right. originally. Yes. Um, and so anyway, I rang her up and I just said, hi, Morella, do you remember me? Blah, blah, blah. And we got off on, uh, onto a really good conversation. Yeah. And I said, just wondered if you needed any help on anything you were doing. She yeah. said, yeah, there is a little brief I'd like you to have a work right. on. Um, and it's to save the planet. <laughs> a little brief uh, to save the planet. Well, well me and Pete <laughs> fell about laughing. But on a serious note, she... Uh, campaigns for people to care for the ocean. Right. And I'm talking about deep sea mining, right. uh, dredging, fishing, mm -hmm. overfishing, mm. you name it. And yeah. she started talking to us about like every second breath we take is produced by the ocean. Wow. That's a great Because of all the oxygen it produces and it's mm. a carbon sink and it stores all that. Mm. Yeah. And the way things are going, all the carbon starting to emit out the ocean. Mm. And quite frankly, it's setting us back 10 years. Right. So right. she, we had a long conversation and she said, so we'd like you to just try and produce something. I'll get around to the point in a minute. It's <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, she wanted us to produce something that would um, kind of force the gov government to, to do something about this and yeah. at least discuss it. Yes. At all these major meetings they have, like G7 and COP26 and that mm. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we produced this campaign with all the leaders listening to a shell. 
Because we had to try and avoid so too simple. much language. Mm. Um, anyway, so that was really good. And little did I know that there was a particular gentleman watching me and Pete dredging a 140-foot barge into the harbour <laughs> to get the front page of The Guardian, which we did do. Wow. Um, with that with that image? With that image, yeah. yeah. Right. No, it was right. really good. So really, it's, really, it's John, really good. Boris Johnson holding a shell to his ear. Yeah. yeah. But all the leaders got Boris Johnson, Joe Biden... Mm. All of them. I can imagine um, Boris Johnson here and a few other things. Just, <laughs> not just the sea, not a political yeah. person, but, you know. No, neither am I. Here, yeah, let's, not, let's not go there. Um, but this guy uh, emailed us and said, I saw what you did in Falmouth. I wonder if you could help me. Um, right. And we said, what do you do? And his name was Eduardo Gonzalez. Yes. Or Goncalves. Um, And he said, um, I campaigned to ban trophy hunting. Right. So that was um, a, a client from a client, great. Yeah, he's, he's been doing it for years. Right. Um, yeah. And he's got some amazing people like the Gallagher brothers and um, God, uh, what's it? Bill Bailey and right. Right. Ralph Fiennes and all of these other people behind him. I mean, no, yeah. hundreds of them. And he said, um, because it's still legal to bring in severed heads of animals. And me and Pete fell off our chair. We said, what? Can't be right. Yeah, there's certain airlines, which I can't talk about on here, that actually still in the cargo that. hold Shit. allow these severed heads of endangered species to be oh, brought God. into London to be put on some mantelpiece of some oh, posh God. tosser, you know. And that's what the poster is doing, right? Yeah. What does so, it say on there? It, says every... it just says every week endangered species arrive in the UK legally. And then so, shown the heads of the animals on the yeah. So I, I, I didn't I didn't know. So I said to Eduardo, let's let me have a think about it with Pete. Yeah. So we, we had a chat, and I just said, wouldn't it be incredible if we put these severed heads on a conveyor belt? Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> once again, <laughs> Pete being Pete, and a great photographer called Andy Glass. Uh, Andy went around loads of different airports. <clears throat> and asked if he could shut down their conveyor belt and use it for a day. Of course, people told us to bugger off because <laughs> airports don't want to yeah. annoy the people, including the, the people, yeah, exactly, the who are bringing in these their, trophies. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, we found one airport that said yes. Uh, we found a group of people who were very interested in, in getting involved in this. And... Um, so we took the shot. I wanted it to be very magnum, very reportage. Yeah. Mm. As if you were there, as if you were a bystander waiting for your suitcases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As these heads suddenly come round on the conveyor belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I almost want to see... I, I'd love to see the kind of the a guerrilla campaign of this where it's done for real and it's captured on CCTV. I know, CCTV I had some offers to shoot this as a film. Yeah. It would be and, amazing. Um, just I'm the shocked faces, because yeah. that's it. That that stuff, you know. I you know, obviously I'm worked in outdoor all my life, and I love a billboard. But you know, the the power of socialising an image. While while billboards are great at it, the some of the stuff that when you when you really shock people and you capture that and share that online is incredible. Well, I mean, to be to, to be honest with you, Eduardo had me and Pete almost in tears. Yeah, you really? Because of course, chopping the head off a defenseless animal it's outrageous and abhorrent at the best of times mm. uh, and obviously Cecil the lion the dentist who killed Cecil the lion do you remember that yeah I actually don't watch any of it I just get to it well I mean that was quite a few years ago but everyone kind of remembers poor old Cecil being shot mm. um, but on a on an even bigger scale apart from the absolute atrocity of doing it they the trophy hunters and some people by the way have are lucky for warehouses to store all the severed heads that they've shot. That's how many they do, like 5,000 elephants. Mm, Some of these guys have got. <clears throat> but they the, the get more rewarded and they win awards and things for the bigger the bull elephant they kill, the better. Yeah. But what's happened Perfect. is they're killing off all the big male bull elephants with the big tusks and the big bull elephants with the big tusks have got big tusks for a reason. Because the climate crisis, we're getting back to the climate crisis now in the ocean, mm -hmm. the water, to dig out the water, is deeper and you need to dig deeper. Right, right. But all of a sudden you've got elephants have got short tusks and they can't get to the water, so all the families of the elephants are dying. Right. So, so you kill one, you kill them all, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So 
We're still talking to Eduardo. We're trying to do another campaign with him as well as we speak. Uh, in fact, I'm with Pete this afternoon discussing it. Um, he's a brilliant guy. Uh, we really want to help. We want to push this bill through. Mm -hmm. We're very close amazing. to doing it, by the way. Uh, yeah. I need to be a blessed relief for everyone, quite yeah. frankly. Well, look, we, um, we wish you well on that. That's amazing. Thank um, you. We are, um, we are going to talk about uh, burgers and... Mushy peas as well. Of course. <laughs> yeah. We've started yeah. on the right yeah. note there. That's brilliant. <laughs> Mushy peas. Great work. Yeah. Well, funnily, let, let's go. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to do something slightly different. Yeah, we've got so over. much work to get through. We've got <laughs> lots of work to get through. Um, and uh, what we thought we'd do as a bit of a, a new feature is, I think we've got maybe nine or ten bits of work to go through. We're going to set a little timer and we're going to try and stick to it so that we can get through all of this work because okay. I don't want to okay. leave it. I'll do my best. And He's but been quite strict. Stop, quite like stop prattling on like an old bird. <laughs> the, 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 the school teacher at the end of the year. Uh, um, so we're going to start with your first billboard. That's going to be our, our, our first thing. Do you remember what your first billboard was? And um, Yeah, yeah when, you, when you asked me this question, I think there's, this is probably around the, I think I did about three at the time and this is one that particularly stood out. Probably because it's about Yorkshire. Yeah. Mushy and it's peas. about mushy peas. It's about home. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I love mushy peas. I love mushy peas. <laughs> and you know, I go to fish and chip shops and I have to ask them. This is no word of a lie. My wife just wets herself. <laughs> I always say, are the homemade mushy peas? Right. And if they say no, I just leave the premises. <laughs> oh, really? I said, oh, okay, I'm not, eat I'm not eating here. Oh, I'm I, thought, sorry. I thought they were all from a tin. No. No, no, no. How, how do you no. make? Oh, God, this is going to be a nightmare. We're never going to look. Have now, you got a recipe for only oh, well, you, you meant to you, you meant to steep them in, with bicarbonated soda tablets, right? Okay. And you steep them overnight, and it breaks down the peas. Right. Do you remember the right. BMP one, the mushy? Yeah. You yeah, sell yeah. mushy that, and it breaks down the peas, and then you boil them very slowly and simmer them, and they're absolutely amazing. So, well, do you so I the think the best so. fish and chip shops make their own mushy peas. Oh, they do. Yeah, without a doubt, behind, and they do behind the mushy pea. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, no, they do, and it's anyway. The, so up north, a lot of people do practice making their own mushy peas. Um, and I love them. And to me, that's the poster. Uh, the headline was Yorkshire Caviar. <laughs> it's very uh, good. It's brilliant. <laughs> which is very true. Two words, and it says everything, doesn't it? Absolutely right. In fact, me and my wife, we did actually talk about trying to sell these and package them up as uh, Yorkshire caviar. Get, get, <laughs> yeah. a, uh, get a, a supply idea. going. <laughs> That's a you open it and he's like, well, it's kind of green. <laughs> it's <laughs> greeny you stuff. You see people Swat. putting it on a little bleeny. So, yeah, so that was, that was the premise behind it. And it is like manna from heaven for a Yorkshire person. And was it easy yeah. to, um, you know, was that with Tony or was that on your own? No, this was with Tony. And Me was and it Tony. what agency were you at? We were at Still Price Court, Twyver de Souza. Snappy. Which then went and merged yeah. with Lintas, which unfortunately wasn't the same agency anymore. Mm. Um, but, and was it a difficult thing to get through? Was it? Did you do many iterations before you got to Yorkshire Caviar? No, you know we, I mean? we did quite a few posters, to be honest with you. This was one. Manor from Heaven was another. Right. Uh, no, the client was great. I mean, yeah. I just wanted them done in a very kind of Constable-esque yeah. oil painting yeah. style. You know, that's great. Hold them up as great reverential... Um, it's a pretty cool first stab at billboards as well, because some people have come on and um, that this is really this is a really good one. Some people have, some people's first posters aren't as good as this. Did yeah. you uh, did you go out and see it in the wild? Given it was your first billboard, yes, did I you? did. Yes, yeah. I did, and it actually did run up your uh, up north. To be honest with you, it did run down south. Did you send the family to go and see it as well? Um, so my family did see it. My family saw it anyway. Uh, oh, that's brilliant! Uh, and they actually said to me, my dad said to me. I saw a lovely poster for you, uh, Mushy Peas, you know, it said Yorkshire Caviar. So that's mine. That's <laughs> oh, brilliant. Way. So I was oh, chuffed to bits. I love it. that. No, it's really lovely. My mum used to say, is it on the front cover of the paper? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, uh, no, mum. <laughs> Weirdly, no. But, but, I mean, I look at the art direction now, and I remember, and this sounds like I'm name dropping, I remember at the time um, I was working with Tony Kay. Yeah. And uh, Tony Kay said, oh, no, you've done the type like that. Oh, too late by that stage. He said he should have got a calligrapher to do it all beautifully. 
Right. And then just put the little full dot, uh, full point as a P with the uh, can. <laughs> oh, I hate to say that's pretty back, good. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> well, that's good. That you, so, you can anyway, always, bless him. You can um, always be up. Right, so that's great. So we're now going to go okay. oh, well, into the We work, did work. that with uh, with a minute and ten. Yeah, but that actually, spare. yeah, we... Yeah. <laughs> That's very right. good, Q. Very good. So yeah. I'm I'm going to jump in here, and uh, I, do, I do like a bit of a timeline. So that we have gone through your work a bit of time. I've no Dan finds it's very amusing, uh, but that's where I am. He's a chronological guy. Isn't yeah, he? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Start in black yeah. and white, and I need to it, end do, up. In do you have LCD? Oh, hundred percent. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Then you see. Like yeah. I, if I'm at home in the front room, and if the if the cushions now aren't in a certain order, and the dog's not in the basket, <laughs> I, can't, I can't start. What about shoes? Do the shoes have to go together. Shoes in the hallway, and then to any teenagers just get out of the room. Um, <laughs> that's, that's an the OCD. Most, that's the hardest. Thing. <laughs> get the teenagers out of the room. Anyway, <laughs> so we, we're going to start with a cigar. I thought we'd yeah. start with yeah, a cigar. Yeah. We got a Why bit not, of mushy peas. You know. Get the cigar out. Well, I'm starting um, the clock. Yeah, ready? Go, go. steady, go. So Hamlet. Um, was was a brilliant campaign, the mild cigar from Benson Hedges. I actually can remember, you know, the lilting little bit of music. No, I mean, uh, obviously, it was the air on a G string. That's wasn't right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, obviously, it's a billboard show, so we're just going to talk about your billboards. And there's a set here of four. Uh, Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet. And the opening one I'm going to describe is one of my favourites ever. Uh, it's Action Man, or a bloke who looks a bit like Action Man. Uh, with um, a very smooth area between his legs. I'll, I'll leave it like that <laughs> because that's how he was. And he's having a little bit of a puff. He's had a bit of a bad time. I mean, then it goes out. So in a way, it's a great little story. It could be a little TV ad. Um, and there were four of them. What, what's the story behind this? Because it was a CDP. Is that right? Yeah. Happy Cigar like called this. Hamlet. CDP, very famous for lots of lovely commercials, whether it be the, um, oh, I'm going back and showing my age now, whether it be the golf bunker mm. where you just saw the bloke <laughs> yeah, just shot after away shot the after bunker, shot. Yeah. <laughs> and even after all the sands come up, next minute it's the divot of earth comes up and then next minute you see the smoke from the cigar. Brilliantly timed. And the w wonderful air on the G-string. Two Rabsy Nesbit combing his hair across oh, yeah. in the photo booth. Yeah, falling down. Falling so down. they did lots of TV, uh, however, uh, then the uh, cigarette ban came in and they weren't allowed to do TV anymore. Right. So the client, a lovely client, he said, so, and I'd just taken over as a uh, Chris director of CDP. Right. And so the brief was, what could you do with Hamlet Cigar? So we investigated it and realised that the law was still on our side for 48 sheet posters. Perfect. And working alongside Indra Sinha, you might remember Indra yeah. Sinha, very yeah. lovely man, brilliant man indeed. Right. He, th he threw the gauntlet down and said, Guy, what would you do? And he, I hadn't even taken the job at CDP yet. This is just while I'm at Simon's Palmer. And he just kind of threw it at me and said, <laughs> have a think, and, you know, just let me know. So the, the one thing I remember seeing that made me laugh, and I always used to love these, was uh, Gary Larson cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, uh, I was going through the Gary Larson book and there was one that just stuck out to me and it was this guy in bed, his feet sticking out the bottom of the covers mm -hmm. and he was looking in horror. His big toe had gone missing and there was just a little sign that said, gone to market. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did is I scribbled that and I put a cigar in his hand. Right, right. Really and funny. I sent it back to... Uh, Indra and I said, I think this is the kind of area we need to be in. Mm -hmm. Very funny. Um, so from there on in, then the brief went to the credit department and me and Tony were cajoling people to do some nice work. And uh, this particular one, uh, we called it Noblus Dummy. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it was meant to be Action Man, obviously, you've got nothing there. Can I just ask a really quick question? Right? <laughs> of course you can. So I know you're... No, bit... I was not the model. <laughs> no. So I think it looks like Tony. Do <laughs> you reckon? Look, look at the hair. It does slightly, look a bit like Tony. It's a slightly gormless, you know, charming expression. I'm not, gonna, I'm not, I'm not even going to respond to <laughs> right. that. No, no, I'm just saying... He's a big bloke, Tony. Yeah, no. And I, he's, he's a really big bloke. If he's in France still, we're all right. Yeah, yeah. he's okay. all right. Anyway, yeah, so carry on. Yeah. So, um, so that was an incarnation of that idea. It was, yes. And um, the one of the gentlemen at the time who became... A very uh, astounding creative, and indeed a very wealthy creative. Who's Ben Priest? Ah, oh, Ben. We haven't yeah. had him on. We need to get Ben on. Yeah. No, Ben's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, and him and uh, 
Tim yeah. of the creative. Um, they had loads of concepts, and this was one, and I absolutely loved it. Right. And I remember we had some debate about who should be smoking the cigar. Is it the girl in bed? <laughs> That's funny. Because she's disappointed right. the fact that Action Man can't perform. Or is it Action Man who realised oh, Did you shoot perform? it both ways? No, we don't. And, but I do remember we had a big conversation about this. And and uh, I think we all decided that Action Man should be the one who's uh, yeah, the trouble consoling if, himself with a cigar. Yeah, because if you get too... Well, it's classic creative, isn't it? Overthinking something. Yes. You know, to Because yeah. that, that's, for me, when I, I remember seeing it a, a long time ago, I just thought it was just so clever and observational, funny and witty. And again, it's a bit like quite a lot of your work. It, that could be a film, but it's just a, a moment. You know what I mean? It's yeah, a story. Yeah. It's a still, yeah, it's a still yeah. from, a, yeah. from a sketch, isn't it? Uh, like a, what do they call it? <laughs> a comedy sketch. Yeah. I mean, we've only got 30 seconds left on this. Now, that was so. it. You're looking at the frog with a cigar now, where his uh, tongue has been burnt <clears throat> by, on the insecticutor. Oh. Right. Go on, we'll give you another minute. We're going right, to give okay. you a minute, I'll yeah. I'll do this quite quickly. Uh, that one was the very first one to run. Right. That one, a can gold. Seriously. Wow. Um, That's good, which was great. Um, so that got the ball rolling, and of course, within the can gold, all the creators went, "Whoa, I want to have a go at this." Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Was it a campaign that was open to the department because everyone knew it was an award winner, or was it people just giving it? You know, could everyone work on it? Like, a, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no. I mean, me and Tony were always like that. I mean, were, were people always chucking stuff because it's a really good open? Well, I mean, we can't. I think our background at Simon's Palmer you used to put the work upon the wall that you liked. Yeah, and then it was there to beat. Right. And at one stage, there were like four or five Hamlet posters, and everyone yeah. loved. No, everyone loved it. I mean, we used to work yeah. till like eleven o'clock at night doing these. It yeah. was great fun. Yeah, the lottery one's very. Fun. The lottery one yeah, is ob was obviously very topical at the time. And it's the finger giving you, you it's not <laughs> tonight, it's not you, Governor. Yeah. Um, and we got into a bit of trouble for that, only because they posted it outside a children's school, uh, one of the, <laughs> and everyone was saying to the teachers, what's all that about? What's that sign mean? Um, yeah. And I then mean, there was Julian Clary, yeah. the Queen. I mean, gosh, you're never able to do these now. I was going to say, you won't be able to run them because of the... the well, the, cigars, you, are, you can't run that anyway. Cigars, and then the content is sex, oh, gambling. No, no, there's no <laughs> way. In fact, there's a lot of my work, you know, be able to run today. Oh, to I don't honest. know. I think you're, you're, you're probably more up to date than a lot of people. I think it's 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 that's part of this show is to look at stuff which how things have changed. Yes, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Very true. But um, it's um it's a great little campaign. I mean, I feel I'm annoyed now. Have I got my order wrong? Were you at Simon's Palmer before this? I was at Simon's Palmer before oh, CDP. But but disaster. but, but, oh, but no, it's not. It's not timeline. It's not because I was at Simon's Palmer before CDP, and it was at the time when. Chris and Mark got kicked out of Simon's Palmer. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Uh, and that, so I went to CDP. Yeah. And then um, went back. I, I got brought back in. Oh, phew. Right. Okay. And that's when I did Nike Park Life and I came back right. in. Okay. He was so, about to throw his mic on the floor there. Oh, um, no, 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 no. So you are right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but let's let's blur the lines. Breathe, of, Hugh. Breathe. <laughs> breathe. No, I went there twice. It's the best agency I ever worked for, without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, amazing. Nice link. Well, we're not going to get... Funny enough, because a lot of people go on about... Not go on about, but Simon's Palmer, the, the Nike stuff really was spectacular, both print, film and everything. But we're going to start with um, British Heart Foundation. Uh, and there's, there's three fantastic posters here. And... Uh, I mean, they're, they're beautifully written, great lines. But for me, um, the look, you know, the illustration, the illustration yeah. was, was something spectacular. Can you talk us through a bit about Of this course, campaign? yeah, you know, I mean, I, 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 this personally is one of my <coughs> favourites in terms of inspiration. Um, just a little bit of background, I'll try and do this very quickly. Simon's Palmer had got that account for quite a while, and I never even knew they got the account, if I'm honest. They used to do little black and white ads in the back of papers and things and 25 by fours. Right, right. Um, and no disrespect to the people involved, but they were kind of invisible. Mm -hmm. And British Heart Foundation was very low on the charities to be given to mm. NSPCC, RSPCA. They were floundering right down towards the bottom. Mm. And <clears throat> for some reason, I don't know why, but I... I had a Soul Bass poster while I was working on this. I just pinned this Soul Bass poster on my wall and it was um, Anatomy of a Murder. 
Brilliant. And I just loved it. And I love the... I've been up to Bristol and met the leading heart surgeon and met all the guys that had chest cut open and all this kind of stuff. And it looked to me like this had been done with a scalpel. Mm. Mm. Sol Bass. It was think, it's basically, it's a figure of a body which has been sort of... Dismembered, yeah, you could say, really. put back that, together. Otto Premiger. Otto Premiger, Premiger yeah. And that movement, it's a, it's a brilliant... Uh, and so I love this. And yeah. um, I remember people saying, well, have you got that on your wall for? I said, I don't know. There's just something about British Heart Foundation. Mm. So we took some of the lines we got, like, uh, behind this case lurks Britain's biggest killer, and and then inside this case, so we lurks Britain's biggest killer. And I, I just then got a scalpel out and started cutting bits of paper and sticking it down, like being back at school. Being really. back at art school, yeah. And uh, But I had to get Sol Bass's permission to do the... Um, Victim of a random attack. So, would you believe it? I actually, um, and these are the days before the internet. I'm not being funny. I mean, this was all photocopying, and yeah. I don't know. Up. I managed to find his phone number, <laughs> and I rang him up just, and I heard him go hello. <laughs> I went hello. Is that Saul Bass? Yes, it is. Who is this? And of course, I'm like northern bloke on the end of the phone. <laughs> This is Guy Moore. I'm just wondering, you did this great poster, uh, Anatomy of a Murder, and I really like the image. Can I use it, please? Oh. And he just said, can I just stop you there? It's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so it was New York, and I forgot about the time difference. And he said something brilliant to me. He just said, I'm really pleased you like that work. I will give you utmost permission. However, really, if you want permission, you need to speak to Matisse. Because I ripped him off. Oh, that's <laughs> so funny. Did you and call that, him? Probably a bit, a bit late for that. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was such a lovely thing for Saul Bass to say. Oh, that's um, amazing. Can I just say that's one of the most amazing stories we've had on the show? Because if when I shook your hand this morning, that means that I'm one handshake from Saul Bass. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> I I, I, I he's one of my heroes. I know, isn't he superb? Um, I remember, um, just a quick aside, I once was... Um, going out with someone who worked at Christie's and I got this amazing film poster with the man with the golden arm. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And it was um, brilliant. But as part of our, we nearly got married, but we didn't. And there was a sort of semi-divorce settlement type thing and I had to give it back to her, which I've, to this day I've always been gutted about because <laughs> A, it's beautiful and B, it's worth like shitloads of money. Um, oh, that, but, that definitely would have been lost. That yeah. have, oh, oh, was that signed by Mr. Bass himself? Uh, no, but it was, uh, it was a, it was a, the tall, long, and well, you, it was a real... Yeah, rare, I know the one yeah. you mean. Oh. I know the one you mean. Anyway, so I'm pleased you said that story because I remember thinking, putting this deck together the other night, thinking, I wonder what is the story? Because it was such an obvious... It, it, it's such an, a, a piece inspired by that you would have, have to have spoken to him. But you didn't have to speak to him about these other two, right? No, no, no. But I, I just... I wanted his permission, really, That's to right, kind of... Because the uh, victim of a random attack kind of started it off. Yeah. Um... So was that the first one? That was the first one. And then did you speak to, um, sorry, I'm going to look, Neil Gower and say, can you do the other two? Or Yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And when you, I'm always interested. Cause I'm well, Neil did, Neil helped with the victim of a random attack. As well. Right. Uh, yeah, because I, I, you know, you don't have confidence doing the artwork yourself. So I kind of pooped myself a bit. <laughs> uh, and I just needed his help. And But Neil was great. It was really, really good. Uh, going back to the, the bit where I think it's quite interesting um, is these 48 sheet posters cost no more than the black and white printouts. Really? That's so weird. And that's the reason we managed to get them through. So mm -hmm. let's just say they were spending 200 grand on black and white printouts. These posters cost exactly the same, but more impact, of course. And yeah. All of a sudden, people knew who the yeah. British Heart Foundation I'm, were. Yeah. I remember seeing the. the um, the random of a victim attack and it's actually one of those i think i was just trying to get into the industry and i just thought if i could do any work as good as that i'll be just everything about it is it's it's cool it's out there it's edgy but it's also very um it's relevant ah. to you know the client it's not just a gratuitous you know no, sometimes no, you go no. oh yeah that's a slightly gratuitous use of soul bass but this was this is beautiful it's I like perfect, the way yeah it's inspired the rest of the because then there was another I think Phil and Graham did. Yeah, the next Phil and Graham drone. did the next tranche. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about them. But I was really, I was just really pleased to have created a campaign that number one people wanted to get involved in, and number two um, didn't have a sell by date really, to be honest. Yeah. But and also that it raised that awareness from posters. It raised their profile, the Heart Foundation's profile. Yeah, I think it was one of the first charities actually to go on a poster. Mm. 
But it's a lot of people seem to do little print ads. For I imagine mm. it also kind of it became a camp uh, a client in the building where people start going. I'm gonna have a go at that. You know, yeah, no, it did. It did go on oh, that thing. I'm not. I'm doing Nike. Oh, because it but, feels like a craft project as well, doesn't it? It's a yeah. But also, what I love about Pulse generally, and I mean, obviously, Hugh, you, you, uh, you'd be all on for this. It forces you to distill your messaging. Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. So we can't get into too much rigmarole about did the smoke, didn't the smoke, did they eat too many pies? None of that. I mean, yeah. it was just let's do something ballsy, bloody, in your face. Mm. I think it's the red. It's just the red and black. It's just so. That was so Simon's Palmer, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Red and black. Yeah. Right. Look. <laughs> well, look, we're gonna, nice, that takes us on to. Yeah, nice link. I need to. Uh, yeah, we're going to set the time. So. Um, we're looking at something quite trippy here, aren't we? We are. Some some Nike work <laughs> for yes. run, Nike running. So yeah, now I tell mean, us about this campaign. Feet on the um, ground, mind in the stratosphere. Yeah, well, this was Sean and Roz, um, and we were looking after Nike, Tony and myself. And there was a brief, and there was always a brief at Simon's Palmer to do great kind of Nike work. And Simon's Palmer done so much wonderful Nike work. And kind of running, um, we'd all seen shots of shoes and, you know, all about speed and one thing and another. Um, but this was slightly different. And Sean and Ross had discovered that it releases endorphins when you run, uh, which is kind of equivalent to getting high. Yeah. Um, so they did these wonderful lines like run now, you could be reincarnated as a slug and feet on the ground, mind in the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we found this uh, with Leah Mitchell. We found this illustrator who basically lived in a cave. <laughs> oh, no, seriously. I mean, he was off his trolley. Completely, smoking weed. Completely his off cave, his head. Yeah, yeah completely <laughs> off his head. Smoking weed. Didn't ring him up at three in the morning, did you? Oh, I was <laughs> try, trying to get the scamps off of him and stuff was like a nightmare. Let's give him a name. Peter Loveday. Peter Loveday. Right, He's good. the man, yeah. So, uh, bless him. So, uh, when he, what did you, I'm always fascinated by this as art directors. Um, how much you do before you give it to the illustrator. So when me and Adam are in a team, uh, we <laughs> we couldn't draw for Toffee, just give everything to Andy Bird and he'd make it look good. Yeah, yeah, Or yeah. give it to Birdie and then we give it to an illustrator. Yeah. But you're an art director's art director. And I, I, were, were Sean and Roz, Roz like that as well? Did yes, they, they were. And I mean, this is finished. This is quite interesting, isn't it? Because, I mean, I think underneath it all as creatives, particularly people like Sean and myself, we're quite control freaks. No way. <laughs> and um, and I do this this one feet on the ground, mind in the stratosphere. I do remember Sean drew something which is not dissimilar to that. And I remember he came in and said, "What do you think to this guy?" Well, I loved it, but I said, "My God, we're going to have to work out how we're going to present this to the client because it's just just so out there." Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just so different. Um, Anyway, there was a client called Claire Dobby at the time who used to be or was uh, an account lady at Simon's Palmer. Oh, okay. She was absolutely brilliant, Claire. She went over. <clears throat> and, um, and we sat and talked to her and the logic of turning it into do running rather than do drugs. Like this is a fantastic way of getting yeah. high that's legal, you know. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Pete Loveday did it. Uh, the illustrations, the final illustrations. And if you look very clear, uh, closely at them, you'll see little faces hidden in the earth. And the... So oh, go, let's go back to the cave again. Why was he in a cave and how did he get... I just think he's he, he he like, he like living uh, like a bit of a nomad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he just felt it's uh, always one tricky. with the world. And, yeah, yeah. It's always tricky it's briefing great. an illustrator because you're going to an illustrator for a specific style, especially in this case. You're going to him because of the work he's done before. And I think if you're... It, it, even if you scamp something up, you have to give that illustrator his craft work oh, to do, oh, right? Honestly, so like, Dan, Dan, I mean, yeah. as I say, we were slightly nailed by it. I think what I think is wonderful about illustration and also quite frightening about it, you're never quite sure what you're going to get. Yeah, 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 because yeah. on a shoot, you can be looking through the lens. Yeah, it's all, sure you know, that. photography, you go, can you just kind of like, you know, tweak that, that bit there? The thing of illustration, it comes back in your stomach, does like a somersault and going, oh, my God. I know, <laughs> I know. And there was a bit of that, to be honest, particularly when we saw the faces hidden in the trees doing really? weird and random stuff like on Magic Mushrooms. 
You don't. Um, I mean, I never spot. Well, I just, like, if you go that's to, the if charm, you go, isn't it? Like, yeah, you start to see faces on the rocks. In there, just the picking rocks up the laptop. Laptop. Me and oh God, yeah, that looks like Tony Malcolm. It's again. the charm of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> She's in every ad. <laughs> um, it's the charm of it, though, isn't it? Yes, of course it's it is. But the client was fantastic. I mean, she in just said, like, let's go for it. Yeah. Let's go for it. Yeah, the just, ghost in the background. I've just seen that. that. There's sort of things where you... Ron, you, you know, your spirit can walk yeah. the earth after you die. Yeah. Yeah. A face, and then there's a banana as the uh, the moon. I mean, he just... I mean, I think after a while, Pete Loveday just lost it, and but lost it in the, the way that we wanted him to lose it. It's kind I, of, it feels like we're watching it in an order as well, doesn't it? And he's done the first No, that, 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 that is the... very much in the order, yeah. to be honest. That was the last one. Great. They, they're really good. I mean, I think they're a little bit ahead of their time because, you know, now everyone goes on about, oh, yeah, you know, you go running and you get your natural high and yada, yada, yada. But, you know... Oh, no, yeah. no one was doing that at yeah. the time. And it was quite risque. Yeah. And, good, and, they're, it, and they're a real departure because, well, a lot of the Simon's Palmer stuff, it looked very colourful and stuff, but it's very photography based. Or it was, mm. we had Malcolm, we've had quite a few Malcolm Benville. Yeah, no, Tiger, Malcolm was Mark, great. Yeah, and yeah. they told us a lot of them. But this is the first time we've talked about this. That's really well timed. We're it's really on well to the timed. Next one. Actually, no, these three are all bunched into one, so we'll have to be a little bit. No, swifter. I think I think we have to give some credit for this piece about yeah. rugby, Nike rugby, obviously. Yeah. Nike's one of their first forays into rugby. This as well, wasn't it? Well, no, the, the very first so rugby one so, they did. So, as people know, we've moved on from the the do running, and we're now uh, looking at uh, a rugby player with a ball. Guy, you explain it to us. Well, it's um, going back to once again, Simon's Palmer and Nike. They were renowned for doing great Nike work, and it was always quite frightening when you got a Nike brief to do. Rugby, the first one was uh, Brian Moore looking massively oh, yes. at camera. It's not the winning, it's the taking yeah. apart. Yeah. That was great. I think we've talked about that. That's for Fembo. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was, yeah. 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 And then there was These Men Are Dangerous Do Not Attempt to Tackle yeah. Them, like the photo so those criminals. Already run. Got a They'd already run. run. A bit daunting, you've got to do these. Um, yeah. And um, we, uh, I mean, you kind of, they said, oh, look, we've got a few people you could use. One of them, Lawrence Delalio. Um, so this brief went into Phil and Graham. Um, Phil and Graham were great. Um, and we talked about how fast he was at the time. And he was. I mean, they became athletes, didn't they? They're not yeah. just drink, heavy drinking idiots. The beginning of the professional game. For yeah, them, right? they really were. Yeah. But, and he, um, Delalio was fast, believe me. And um, let's get it down to three words, five words if we can, or just a pure visual if we can. And bless them, you know, they've got this wonderful, the days of VHS. Yeah. When you get the, zzz, the funny lines as you fast forward. But just literally that, FF, uh, and the little arrows to fast forward. And I think Tim O'Sullivan did the shot. I mean, remember. I think, imagine at the time, uh, when, it, when it falls into someone's lap, you just think, oh, my God. It's so it's like for for us, it's the epitome of brilliance. You know, it's like you said, it's it's a super smart visual, fast forward thing. It says everything. It's a great link, isn't it? And then, like you say, the treatment. I mean, the thing I was interested in was at the time. I remember just oh, just so many things about it. I love, but the, even the treatment of this shot, which we had the fuzzy lines. Did you yeah. do a lot of craft work? Yeah, on there that? was quite a bit of craft in that. I do remember uh, Phil and Graham literally. Um, painstakingly working this out. And those two guys. Where the blur it. should go. Where yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Where the, and yeah. I think, and Phil and Graham, please feel free to email me and slag me off if I'm talking nonsense. But I, do re I seem to remember a conversation. Do we need the logo on the poster? Because his boot is a perfect bottom right-hand corner and I could see the logo on his boot. That's a very... I'd never even... Have and I seem that. to remember we had this conversation. But... Uh, Anyway, no, it's a lovely pulser, um, and it works. It's very simple, and it's uh, effective and powerful. No, it's good. Right. Thank you, and thanks, Phil and Graham. Uh, hello, mm -hmm. chaps. I saw them the other day. Hello, chaps. Uh, kind of, uh, Phil they, and Graham, oh, long, yeah, longest yeah. running relationship in advertising? Yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, Tony, not where. No. 30 no. years. 30 years. No, but I reckon they're longer. The you know, I think they might be now. Well, we'll have a little... Um, I think they probably are, actually, to be honest. We get, a we get T-shirts made up. <laughs> <laughs> we could do, can we? We could. Right, moving on. Oh, Dan. 
Oh dear. Well, well I'm I'm actually quite happy to talk about this now. <laughs> we'll be very quick on this one. It's it would have been a different story if uh, if the Premier League had finished in a different order. Yeah, but, but um, he's a happy man. He's fourth, and Arsenal were fifth. <laughs> um, right, who wants to go? But on yeah, let, let's let's talk about the the Arsenal poster. Um, yes, this, they, yeah, they, yeah. their season of invincibility. But it wasn't really their a poster, se- was it? Or was it? It well, was a no, press ad, was, but technically it's. It well, actually, to be terribly honest with you, we wanted it to be wrapped around the Arsenal Stadium. The stadium, were, yeah. Well, they were doing some building work and they got all the right. the Great. building, um, what do you call them, the uh, hoardings. hoardings. <clears throat> Would have been perfect. And we wanted it all wrapped round. Yeah, and wasn't that in time for the parade? Was, wasn't there? A, yes, that's correct. Yeah, it was trying yeah. to get it in time for the parade. Um, and so we had two versions of this, the so we'll win, 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 draw, 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 you know, W, W, D, D, W, W, D, 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 D. I remember talking about this, and uh, which, so we just lost the L on Arsenal because there is no L in Arsenal. It's just brilliant. I don't know uh, who said that. That is one of the finest. But that was things. me and Tony did I this, thought, yeah, um, the, and it, and that's what we decided. Let's let's drop the L and just brilliant. call it Arsenal. It's brilliant. I remember I did a I when I used to have a blog, <laughs> a long time ago. But I did a thing on Top Lads, and this ended up being my favorite. I think it got voted the favorite. Oh, ever. thank you very much. Yeah, because it's oh, well. Obviously, it's a footy thing. Yeah, I'm not an Arsenal fan, um, but it, although like, he lives right next to the stadium, yeah, I live right. For next all you door. listeners who want to go and give him hate mail, <laughs> but um, we had we had two versions of this. I, I remember talking to Tony Davidson. Yeah, Tony about talked, this. We had Tony Davidson talked about this as well. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I mean they were great, Tony and Kim, because um, we also had one. If they got if they lost at all, there's only one L in Arsenal. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's Just in case a, there was another. You That's know, good. It's good. Just in case. But was, no, we were happy with that. It's really that. interesting because we spoke to Tony about it at the beginning of creating this podcast. I think it was about fourth. Or fifth yeah, he was, he was early early doors, wasn't he? Yeah, and we, we were talking about Liverpool. Yeah, because Liverpool were about well, were almost if and it was going to be Liverpool. Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay, all right. I like that. But then I think and then they lost to Watford the following week, didn't they? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I think it was our fault. But you can't do that. I've already done it. I know. Yeah. Do some come on, new, Tony. Come on, you know, <laughs> you used to beat me up for following are, other people. There are no new ideas. Um, we were gonna. We're just gonna have a very quick mention. We're not gonna go on it. Uh, Robbie Fowler and stuff, which you did at um, Simon's Pond. But that they were press ads. But they were they were amazing pieces of work. Yeah, the people art, should art. go and check those the out. God Moves yeah. in Mysterious Ways. Yeah, those ones. yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. I, lo- I was looking at the detail of them the other night and um, there's so much in there to, 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 you know, that you repeat. A bit like the do running stuff, the, the, the visuals. The, the collage, he's, yeah. He's next to you, he's oh. around the other side of you. There well, he he, I mean, we went to, I did a commercial uh, for, actually, it wasn't a football, football club, it was for a sponsorship. And I was in Italy and I, I went into this... Um, one of the shots was in this kid's bedroom and he got a shrine to his famous team right? with the candles and everything. And it was kind of quite Dan's frightening. Dan's got one to Harry Kane. Oh, yeah. The saviour. Yeah. <laughs> um, well but it was own. amazing. It was amazing. And there were even like little ones on the side of the road. Well, was this football. in Italy? In Italy. I mean, it's uh, relig- I, it's re- it really is religion I, yeah, there, and isn't God, it? And Fowler was called God, Yeah, you see. Yeah. So right. the two things kind of started to happen together. Mick Mahoney and uh, Andy Amadeo. <clears throat> we're working on this with us. Um, they left, so I got a guy called David Hiscock, who's an ama- he's a fine art yeah. uh, teacher yeah. and yeah. illustrator and photographer, yeah. genius. And uh, we worked with him, and he created these wonderful. Yeah, they were, wonderful they were a bit work, works of art, you know, for, you know, with respect. But they, they were beautiful. But um, I mean, there were at times. I mean, I don't mind saying this on the on, on your blog. I mean, I remember Claire Dobby was a client. Mm. To create each one of these press ads was like 30, 40 grand right. for the illustration. Yeah. Big. You do not get that kind yeah. of budget now. You're to sticking do a Google Doc and just drag in a few generic <laughs> images. I'm not exactly. <laughs> but Hugh, look, I mean that that's the difference, isn't it? it? Is. I mean, I'm not that I'm not trying to slag the situation. No, it's no. nothing to do with that. We were talking about Graham Different Fink times. the other day, and he was I mean, he was talking about weeks and weeks and weeks just to get the the bees. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 on the yeah. Benson Edges. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. yeah right, lovely. Moving on, moving on. Dan's going to get a bit swift on us. So we're going to go to Abbott Mead now. Yeah. We're not going to spend long, uh, but we'd like you to talk to us briefly about a, well, a brilliant economist post you did and just generally what was the vibe like 
there because we've had sorry to keep referencing our other guests but we've had Dave Dion uh, we've had Paul Belford Tim Riley everyone we did, we did an economist special as well we, we? did an economist special we, oh wow okay we've had so many people um, who've touched this account and it's just it, it, even now we're still talking about it so well, what, what great was, work great account great people working on it I mean yeah. it's the it's yeah. the trifecta it's a shame it? isn't it it's not really out there anymore but I don't, no it is I, I'm, to be terribly honest with you Everyone who joined Abbott Mead Vickers, everyone wanted to have a economist yeah. poster in the book. Yeah. Uh, now, I have to say, when I joined Abbott Mead Vickers, I was very happy, and I still am today, to have been graced with David Abbott's presence before he died, bless him. So right. Right. I had to go three or four months with David. Right. Um, I remember walking in with some lines on Economist. David's not a frightening character, as in he's not menacing or he's, he's not aggressive, he's very pleasant, he's very polite, he's very quiet. But when you've got economist lines and you walk into him, you're the one his bottom's going like 300 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember Tony and myself were called in just to say, oh, I've got any ideas on economists. Because I think there were thousands done, but only a few made the grade, so to speak, yeah. you know. Uh, and we, we presented this one to him. The Can pregnant, you read it out to us? Or? Yeah, the pregnant pause, make sure you're not the father. And I remember David <laughs> just kind of touching his chin. He went, very good. Very good. <laughs> I, I do like that. Very good. So we were absolutely elated. Yeah. Um, so we got one of those through. We got two, actually. We, we did another one, which was just a one. little, it was more of a strip just outside news agents. And it said over-the-counter intelligence yeah, sorry, I forgot to put that in. Yeah, no, that yeah. was another one. Um, but everyone started to try and push it. Dave Dyer certainly pushed it along visually. Then there's a missing jigsaw and all yeah. this kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, what did, a great campaign. You did know, you, red and white, you could spot them 300 miles away. Did you, you, as a... Because I work, when I worked with Adam, Adam was very good at lines and I was actually fancying myself at visuals. So we were very good like that. We weren't amazing art directors, but we were really good on... 50-50. You know, some teams are more like Tiger, Savage, Russell, yeah, Russell really yeah. real yeah. art directors. Yeah. Were you, because when you, I was interested, when you went there, did you think, oh, bloody hell, just a load of lines, I'll let Tony crack them on, or do you like writing lines as well? Oh, I love writing okay, lines. Okay, great, great. No, because I we Definitely talked to do. Belford, uh, I think it was our second show, and he, he said he turned up and thought, right, that's it, I'm going to have to get this stuff going visually so yeah. he had decided <laughs> that was the light bulb moment yeah <laughs> and then he literally light bulb. yeah yeah lovely yeah and yeah then, but it's interesting wasn't it as a campaign because you're going oh you can't fuck with it it's just lines on red but then somehow it gently you know the purple patch you had the jigsaw you had the fly and, and after a while the bus roof there was the oh yeah yeah the leaders in high office yeah 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 that was lovely that yeah it's so, really good it's but, quite funny though there was a change when david was there there wasn't much of a change visually very much lines yeah. type, very uh, classic. And then obviously poor David when he departed, things, I'm not saying that was the wrong thing to do in terms of uh, no, no, no. adding visuals, mm -hmm. but just pushing the envelope a bit. Well, the things about... And a change in the medium as well. So it's, it's things like not just being a flat poster, it was turning into yeah. a light bulb and then the, the, the bus. And the bus was there. I think the bus was done while David was around. Right, okay. Dennis, so. Yeah, there's a thing about Reason High Office, and I think they, they took it to David, and he was in the... He's in the top office. The office yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Took, they tweaked the line. But there was things like, you know, two-thirds of the world is covered by the ocean, and the rest is by the economist, and it was two-thirds of blue, and then a bit yeah. of red. And you can... I mean, there's that book. Have you read... I'm sure you've got the book... Um, Red well, isn't it or something? It's, oh yeah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it is. It is. Uh, but it's got every one of them in there. But we it's... had another one that um, I don't even know whether we ever presented it. I, I wish we had. It now. But it, it was just a really interesting line because me and Tony used to talk about this. Do you dread the thought of a school reunion? Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's nice. That's really good. You know, yeah. I could run now, right? Yeah, I could run now. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh, and well, I love that one. Would you like to sit next to you at dinner? Which I thought was yeah, really yeah, that's nice. You boring um, fucker. Do <laughs> <laughs> do um, do that one up. We'll put it on the um, yeah, side. Right, we're going to move on. Right. Wow, we did that. Yeah, that was good. Forty seconds early. That's right. good. Oh my god, we're getting it off to a pack. Yeah. Oh, so we're going to now go to an agency called Malcolm Moore. Oh yes. So um, you obviously had thought, fuck this, I'm going to have my own gaff. Is that right? You're yeah, entirely. from Abbott Mead. 
we kind of had our hand forced a bit. We hadn't, we hadn't quite got our shit together. Right. Um, but anyway, we ended up taking the plunge, Malcolm Moore. Um, Just you two, is there? Was uh, there, was, there... Uh, there was Deakin, Malcolm Moore, Deakin, Blazy. Okay, but they never get a mention. Uh, but just, <laughs> like Simon's got, Palmer. It, but we just got kind of condensed to Malcolm Moore and we created this little boy called Malcolm Moore as our letterhead. Oh, sweet. Which was made up of all our faces when we were kids. It all sounds a bit mental. That sounds about right. Um, and uh, we just wanted uh, clients to feel like a kid in a sweet shop. So we had sweets as our clients used to come in and get, you know, a quarter of bonbons or oh, nice. sherbets, <laughs> lemons really? yeah, or whatever. That's so cool. I love that. Uh, and a chemistry set was kind of what we were uh, talking about, about how we get on and whether there's a spark or whether there isn't. And, you mm -hmm. know. Anyway, 9-11 buggered us um, when, the, when the towers dropped. Really? That's when we started losing business. Well, right. I mean, without going on about this, I'd, Obviously, we all remember that horrific moment. But there were two ways people behaved. One was spend like there's no tomorrow because mm. it's going to be a nuclear war. Okay. Enjoy right. your time now because right. we haven't got much longer on this planet. Mm -hmm. And there's also another bunch of people that were digging a bunker and raiding Sainsbury's top shelves for all the tins of beans and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Most of our clients were the raiding Sainsbury's top shelves and bunkering right. down and saying we're not doing any advertising. Well, they... Do you have more American clients than UK? No, no, no. They're all UK. All UK. They're all UK. Uh, Acuris was our founding client. Right. They bunkered down. This is not the time to be wanted to buy a watch, which I pretty, I kind of half understand that. Um, however, we got a whole load of clients. And one of the clients that we won, VH1. which was a bit like winning Nike for us, which was MTV, and I, I think we pitched against Sarge's mother, all kinds of agencies, and we won it. Great. Uh, which was was our um, amazing um, uh, moment as an agency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there were lots and lots of briefs. Uh, in fact, we got nominated for a pencil in our first year for stuff we'd shot with Tom Carty and stuff. And there was this particular brief about Aretha Franklin. Mm. Um, Aretha Franklin, fantastic gospel singer. So we literally looked at all her tracks and... You pick out some of the words like I say a little prayer for you. Uh, sisters are doing it, doing it for themselves. Um, the, end, the end line is the gospel according to... Absolutely. Theresa. And it was announcing uh, that was going to be playing at a certain time and son of a preacher man. And we did them like church posters. Yeah. We, I, we got into trouble for doing this because we actually nice, yeah. uh, did post a couple up. Onto, onto ch church uh, Yeah, onto boards. church boards. Did, um, did the big man have a word with you? <laughs> no, I, did he get struck down? I think we got into trouble from Brixton, mm -hmm. to be honest. I mean, it's a um, brilliant idea because actually was, that's one of me, my main questions was, they're very nicely art-directed press ads and they actually look like they're sort of reportage shots of a thing. It's quite clever and there's just a little logo at the top. But then I thought, oh, I wonder if they actually did them for real. Yeah, no, we did a couple of these for yeah, real. Yeah, they yeah. shot them in situ and then we had to, obviously, once we got kicked around a bit, had to then create them and then drop them in place. Yeah. Um, but great. we wanted them to be done as crudely as these kind of like day yeah. glow yeah. posters, you know. Yeah. That's what made it quite interesting, to mm. be honest. No, I, I remember them. I think they're, uh, they're brilliant. Again, they're just great art direction, great lines. Thank you. Um, okay. We're going to – can you hear that? Someone's cutting someone Someone's out. Someone's cut. Yeah, someone's slicing up it's body. It's anatomy outside. of a murder. We're yeah, back, I was going to say. Back to the the Soul Foundation. Live <laughs> episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a murder happening next door. <laughs> but let's not discuss that. Nice link. Um, where are we going to go now? We're going to go... We're going to go and think. Yeah, we're going to go think. Leah um, we got, We've got quite a bit of Leah Burnett. We're going to talk about think, obviously McDonald's, and we're going to take McDonald's to um, Canada. So... Uh, again, the thing thing, I, I know you weren't so massively involved, but I just wanted to talk about it because it's very different from some of your other stuff. That's what I like. You've got so many different sort of um, different tones. And I remember seeing this uh, when my kids were quite little. Yeah. Um, and I always used to do this thing at the um, at the Red Man. Uh, so I'd say stand here. And then, you know, some bloke would just cross. And, uh, and they'd look at me and like, why aren't you crossing? I said, well, you got to wait for it. It's green. And there's that human behavior. And I remember seeing this thinking, bloody, and it really, really affected me. I thought it was amazing because it's the truth. 
And so then it's, it's a good enough line. And then when then I saw that then it's written in kids like work kids uh, script underneath. I thought, oh bloody hell, that's good. And then I found the credits and Belford had done it. And I thought, oh god, this is this is a good bit of work. Then I saw Guy Moore's name on it, you know. And the well, to be honest, I mean, I I, um, I think I was poorly at the time. Um, so Tony worked with uh, Rick and Dan. Rick, and Rick Dan. Brim, Dan Fisher. We've heard of them. I yeah. mean, yeah, you <laughs> what know. What have they done? <laughs> what have they done? Bless them. Uh, Actually, we're trying to get Dan in in a couple of weeks. Well, I mean, no, I mean, what Amazing. a fantastic couple of guys and highly creative people. Mm. Oh, this was a, a one of a few of these. Yes, I was trying to find out. I should get the others up. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what the other ones said, but very similar, yes. all about copying behaviour and yeah. And the, kids. This one says, if you use your mobile whilst crossing the road, your kids will copy you. And it's so it's not a massively clever line, but you're right. The insight was a thing that was really clever. Huh? And then obviously Belford put in his wonderful spark. And he, I'm saying that, I mean, Rick and Dan are pretty oh, yeah. shit up uh, creatives and art directors so themselves. That's what I'm interested in, because at the time, so, did, you know, like you say, everyone's pretty good art directors there. And then you have designers and that. So was that awkward going, oh, by the way, let's get another art director who doesn't even work in the building. I think that's cool, just getting more and more people involved uh, because why wouldn't you just until it's great? But then some places go, why would we do that? We, we're already paying these people. Oh, well, I think there's always a bit of that. And I think, to be honest with you, Hugh, I think there's a bit of that with this. Yeah. Because, oh, um, you, know, you know, all of a sudden it... It ramps up, doesn't it, the cost? Yeah, yeah. You've, you've suddenly got like five quite heavy-hitting creatives working on this mm. as opposed to just two, you know, and yeah. a yeah. art director or uh, creative director. But uh, well worth it. And, I mean, you know, when you look at it, the lovely touches like the smudges around the edges and hmm. stuff that say. people have got, can we retouch that bit of blob of blue on there? You know? <laughs> No, 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 that's what makes it interesting. I think there was another campaign that might have been written down again. It had water on the imagery and it was about drink driving. Do you remember that? Yeah, and it was yeah. Too, and it was um, sort of disfiguring people's faces. Yeah, I, I think that was written down. I think that was written uh, down. Was it the reflection? It was. So, no, the water had kind of spilt on. It's like you oh, put okay. a pint pot yeah. Yeah. over oh, an over image a, and the yeah. ink had run. Yeah, the and, alcohol. Yeah. And it, I remember yeah. seeing it thinking, God, it's just so, such an intelligent. I don't think um, I've seen that. Wait, I will try and find Dig it. that one out. Okay, we're going to move away from drink driving and we're going to get to burgers. Um, <laughs> a lot of Maccas. Talking stuff. about I think heart attacks. We're going to need extra time on burgers, aren't we? So yeah. I'm going to reset. Heart this attacks and, and burgers. Gonna... Yeah. yeah. Quite nicely linked. <laughs> so, um, so it's the Elvis story, isn't it? <laughs> going round and round in circles here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you've been quite um, humble in the stuff you've supplied because there wasn't, I think you've probably done a lot more than you've got here. But I think, like we said, time's short and we just want to have the best stuff. Um, but we'll talk, well, we're, look, we're looking at a gherkin or gherkow. Yeah, I mean, this was at the time when McDonald's were on their hands and knees. Really? Do you remember uh, Super Size Me? And, yeah. Uh, well, that had just name? that kind of had just come out. Oh, the film about... Yeah, with the guy who that went guy McDonald's just for 30 ate, days. Ate nothing but bloody ham, uh, McDonald's. How do you forget about that? Yeah. Breakfast, breakfast lunch, bre and dinner for 30 days or something. And he it? wondered why he felt ill. And yeah. I just thought, I think, <laughs> hang on a minute. I think no one need, actually does that. I yeah. think you need an operation on your brain, <laughs> to be honest with you. Morgan Spurlock, you toss More, hey, that's him. Morgan's I mean, if you had, you know, if you had Indian meals, they should have called him McMahon yeah. and yeah. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> but that so, was, it was around the kind of Michael Moore documentary times as well. Oh, yeah. It was. The reaction to that was. But it? I mean, to be honest, McDonald's were having a lot of trouble with, uh, you know, what goes into the McDonald's too much salt, too much sugar, too many foreskins, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> what bit of the pig doesn't yeah. go in? You know, it's all Eyeball, that kind eyeballs of Eyeballs and arseholes. Yeah. 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 Eyeballs had, and arseholes. We've yeah. had soul bass, foreskins, <laughs> and eyeballs and arseholes. Yeah. So it's a great um, <laughs> there's a McDonald's for everyone was kind of the line. They wanted to make it democratic. Me and Tony had wrote this commercial called Just Passing By, which is very which famous. was just yeah. um, we observed people going in. And I'd forgotten how, because now, you know, McDonald's is really, you know, it's not like it was. Oh, oh, yeah. it, was it was literally that the whole McCafe. Well, they they had an overhaul, didn't they? Where they started to 100% British beef. So they had they had to react to mm. the the new healthy lifestyle. Yeah, salad. and the, so you, know, this you would was, never have seen a salad. In, so this was just once again. This was just 
um, an, an honest, do you have a gherkin or do you take it out? Yeah. yeah. So just gherkin or gherkin out. Obviously a nice little ring to it as a line, but it was a just truism about McDonald's. To be fair, look, I'm looking at that and I'm actually feeling quite hungry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the shots were the great, shot. weren't they? I mean, the, the really, literally in your face. Are you gherkin or gherkin out? Gherk in. A gherk yeah, in. Gherk I'll, in for I'll me. double down on the gherkins yeah. as well because okay. um, <laughs> my my eldest hates gherkins. She's picking them out and I'm putting them. Wasn't yeah, there absolutely. Thing, wasn't there a thing you could go in and ask for more at McDonald's? Could you say, can I have, and they'd give you a little thing. Of, yeah, well, there was that lovely commercial with a woman who was pregnant, wasn't there? And the, and the oh, husband, because yeah. Golden right. gets a little tray of gherkins for her. And then there was Phil and Darren's one where the guys say, no, you're all right, you're all right, you're all right. And then there's, wasn't it the gherkin bit that, you're that, right, that yeah. clinched it because he he left the gherkin in or something? Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I yeah. think you're right. Oh, you're all right. Because he, yeah. yeah, because he because there was that bonding thing oh, between the dad and the yeah and the stepdad, wasn't it? That was it. Son and the stepdad. Yeah, yeah. son and the and stepdad. He, he didn't son like and the stepdad. Him, but then yeah. there was like, all right, all right, you're lucky. You're all right. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a uh, well, it's a truism, isn't it, of life? You know, like exactly. You're saying, and you can get because it's a bit like. Um, I don't want to digress too far, but like scones, you know, cream, jam, or jam, cream. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just leave yeah. that. Dan's frowning. I'm hoping he does the same as why, me. Why is there an option? It's cream first, then jam on top. Oh, right, we're going to have to say Oh, no, we're yeah, have to the, the podcast right now. It's jam and then cream. It no, is. It's not. Uh, we're going to have cream. To... <laughs> Is it, it, isn't it, what is it? Is it Devon Cornwall, isn't it? The, yeah, it's, yeah. The, Devon, it's, the, it's well, the big war. But, but can yeah. I throw in butter? Obviously, underneath all that, there's butter. But what cream are you using? Well, clotted. If the cream's yeah, too runny, you can't get the jam on it. That's clotted why you got cream. the jam first. Yeah. But it's clotted cream, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. With the crust. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And the, uh, <laughs> you have to. With the crust. The, the, the cru but when you get really good clotted cream, it's got a Oh, yeah, it has, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like a, almost like a brulee top. Yeah, like yeah it that. has. Oh, I yeah, love yeah, the crusty yeah. bit. Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh. Well, let's go for a yeah. tea. Okay, let's have a, <laughs> a sip of McDonald's and a cream. McDonald's and a cream. But, okay. like, but just on, on that, uh, once again, the, it, during that time when they were having a bit of a nightmare, there was a lot of, dare I say, flouncy advertising. A lot of like, you know, you could say smoke and mirrors, yeah. trying to avoid anything. Mm -hmm. And we just said, look, let's just be honest about this, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Just win people over by just being honest. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it worked. It's great. So it's a great line as well. Just, yeah. just so straightforward. Okay. Perfect poster. So we're now looking at <clears throat> box. Um, it's called it boxes, right? Um, yeah. Happy I mean, meals. Yeah, happy meals. You did a, a great commercial with Vince Squibb, wasn't it? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. These were stills from it, or did you shoot them for real, real? Uh, no, uh, Vince actually shot these. Did he? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we we shot these whilst we were actually shooting the film. Yeah. And it's, once again, it's just a great observation. I mean, what is it with kids and boxers? Yeah. I mean, every, every Christmas in every house over the country. Yeah, they play with the boxers, yeah. don't they? And Happy Meals, it's like opening up a treasure trove, isn't it? Yeah. What you got in there. Hmm. Uh, I know they're, they're kind of anti-toys now, but I don't know a single kid who doesn't like a Happy Meal box. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. got to be phenomenal, really. So these lovely observations of kids that are made costumes or hiding under boxes with a typography sweet done in a kind of box manner like this way up or fragile mm. and not an amazon um, logo in sight as well which you wouldn't find on no, any I'm, box in the world these days no you wouldn't <laughs> would you? shortage of cardboard around yeah. the world so thanks to amazon it's funny because when <clears throat> i remember at, towards the end of leo's when i was uh, we you and i sat at the end of this bloody corridor do you remember and we were both I can't remember who went first, you or me. And I thought, oh, that's it. I think I went first and then you followed me yeah. out. And I think I'm not going to see. I think you sat, I think you just I had threw got, the towel in and you thought, well, you just got to do that for you. You just missed your redundancy money. Also. No, no, I got to, <laughs> I, no, I went to Sarchi's. <laughs> that's right. I, I got my gig and you said, well, that's me. And we were, me and Guy were sat and we had all like boxes around us. It was like the fucking exit room, you know. Was well, so it to move you down the end of the yeah. corridor? Oh, yeah, so yeah, the, yeah. the further down no, the, the corridor you go. Yeah. We were a couple of lepers at the end of the road, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I forget all the work we do. And then I thought, God, I might not see Guy again. And, you know, that kind of, oh, that's a bit sad. And then in, I think I saw you somewhere or something said, oh, he's off to Canada. Mm. And I was thinking, right, that's really a long way away. Yeah. The colds yeah. of Canada. Yeah. And then I think I met this man on my left, Dan, when we're setting up the podcast. Oh, wonderful. At one point, and Dan's going, 
we've got to fucking have this campaign on. It's brilliant. And and I went, oh, is there a story behind that? And I was like, I said, it just looked like classic classic billboard posters. And Dan kept saying, no, no, we've got to get it on. So kudos to him and to you. And, when I, and then I did see it and I thought, oh, fucking hell, this is really good. And it's taken this long. <laughs> so because we I interviewed you I think you wrote to me about it the other day yes I did so we're going to yeah. feature that on our social um, platforms alright uh, okay but, but now I'm going to ask you to say it all over again on the mic cause for our listeners no um, worries so at all so you went you went to Quazet is that right I went Quasette. to Quasette. I got Quasette. I was actually freelancing at VCCP and I got a phone call from a headhunter who said uh, Guy look this might sound a bit ridiculous, but are you willing to emigrate <laughs> to Canada? And I'm like, what? Um, we heard you at the end of the corridor. So. <laughs> and I'm getting asked to emigrate to Canada. And it turned out that because of that film just passing by, they wanted me to go to Canada and help them out uh, at this agency called Cassette. Right. A lovely agency. Uh, great people there. Wonderful place, Toronto. I have to say, if, if I've been single... Without kids, I would now be living in Canada. Really? Okay. One of the best places in the world, well, without I, a doubt. Without a doubt. So do you, you're just talking about the people there. On I was on the um, Canjurian 19, and this had won Grand Prix the year before, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also on the jury was a guy called Carlos Moreno. Oh, Carlos is... And uh, what a fantastic uh, what a human man. being. Yeah. He's a lovely man, isn't he? Oh, God. I, I mean, we spent... 20 hours a day together in a bunker in in, um, in Cannes looking at all the outdoor work. He's just such a lovely bloke. Just bulk. such a Peter lovely man. was yeah. great, great people to But we talked to about this a lot as well over over evening beers. So, and yeah, so he, what's his, um, I feel a bit like... Carlos Marina, is, uh, he was the ECD with Pete. Uh, uh, Pete, uh, uh, Cosette. Sorry, 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 sorry. In Toronto, yeah. So I'm not listening, am I? Sorry. I've had a bit of an a, a, a Alzheimer's moment. Um, <laughs> Peter and Carlos were the ECDs of the agency. Right. They got me in to help them out at McDonald's. So you took the gig. And I then... took the gig, and it was only meant to be three months. That's so weird. So you said, right, I'll go to Canada for three months. Yeah. That's so three exciting. Through all three months freelance, you know. I you, love that. It ended up being four months, but then they ended up giving me a contract. So I ended up being there 18 months, but flying backwards and forwards every six weeks. Wow. So six weeks in Canada, two so, weeks in London, six weeks in Canada. But I was working all the time remotely, mm. so I was doing remote work yeah. before COVID. But, yeah. So uh, without, without mm. being disrespectful, um, did you think, or did you ever imagine that this little kind of phone call to Canada in a, in a, with a, you know, with a can gold? You know, no, like a million years. Grand Prix. So, Grand Prix, one so yeah, Grand Prix. Prix. No, so it was tell, a Grand Prix. Yeah. So tell us how you got. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Tell us how you got from that to because it's a great story. Yeah. Say. Oh no. It's, I mean, I, these things. I mean, goodness me. Can make it. I mean, all the stars align. Um, well, I used to go down to the headquarters in Canada probably twice a day. Well, certainly once a day. Sometimes twice a day. Right. In these cabs on these freeways. Uh, and on the way to the uh, headquarters, there's this big monstrosity poster that always had real shit on there, like a giant watch or a woman reclining in some jeans. Or mm -hmm. I mean, it was quite appalling. Most kind of billboard work, no disrespect to um, the States and Canada, but they're not very good, mm -hmm. really, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and they were rubbish. And I, I remember... Um, speak to the client, Antoinette, her name was, absolutely uh, lovely lady. Um, and she, uh, we were just talking about work and I said, God, I've got to say the posters around here are just appalling. Yeah. yeah. I said, yes, they are. I said, that one, when I keep passing it on the freeway, makes me want to just like throw up, to be honest with you. It's so mm -hmm. bad. She said, do you know that we own that poster? <laughs> Well, they, they bought like, a load of real estate, didn't they? Because yeah. they were on them so often. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm like, what do you mean you own it? Um, <laughs> she said, we own the poster and rent it out for other brands to use. Yeah. She said, so if you've got an idea, just I'll let you put it on that poster. Oh, my. That's like a, someone saying. <laughs> so anyway, so um, of course, that was like, wow, wow, wow. So that threw the gauntlet down. So I got the credit department. In Toronto and also in Montreal, because there was cassette in Montreal, to start thinking about what could go on that poster. Was it just one? Just one poster. But, of course, you saw it going there yeah, and coming back. back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
So you got double whammy there. Um, so if it, if it was any, got, if it was shit, you saw it twice. Yeah. Uh, so make sure it's a good one. Mm. And um, we had some nice posters, don't get me wrong. Uh, and we ran a few. And then these couple of guys, uh, and I'm fortunate, I've just forgotten the goddamn names. Have you taken the notes down? We'll come back, we'll come back to it. We'll, we'll come get, back we'll to that. Names, uh, these two lads came up to me and said, um, we've had this idea, Guy, and he was quite late in the day. Um, we've had this idea, Guy, that we'd like to chuck in the mix. Um, did you know there's a McDonald's on the left of the freeway when you come off of Great. He said, it's about 300 metres away. I said, no, 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 I didn't, no. Where is it? He said, oh, it's behind a tree and, da, 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 you know. And uh, it's a shame because no one knows it's there. So we thought this would be quite nice as a poster. Big close-up <laughs> of the logo, next exit. Uh, for the, for the, and I, you just knew it was McDonald's straight yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. And then they said he could do one of this one, like you know, and traditionally you, they've been really protective of that. Of oh, the and when, arches, you, when you right? come back, it's just another crop the of the way, arches. Yeah. It says next right, you know. Yeah. Um, and I loved it, absolutely loved it. So I went and presented it, and the client absolutely loved it too. Um, by which stage my kind of contract had run out now. So I come back. Spencer Dingle, David yeah. Theroux, Philippe the, Brazard, Jordan Hammer. Jordan and Spencer. Yeah. The, they were the guys There's I worked There's a guy with. here called Guy Moore. Never heard of him. <laughs> Craig McIntosh and James, Jamie, Jamie's yeah, Center. Craig. Everybody Bosch done it, right? Yeah. Sorry. But Spencer and Jordan, I mean, absolutely top-notch guys. So they presented it to me. I went in, uh, I was elated, went to present it to the clients. Uh, I think two days later, I was boarding a plane to come back to London. And then these guys rang me up and said, you know, we've just won the Grand Prix. <laughs> I went, whoa, <laughs> wallop, and we get. Um, but what I thought was lovely about that is just how it pays to be in inquisitive all the time. And I and, think, you know, it, it also... It ticks so many boxes, this like art direction, simple, it's poster mentality, but the insight that there is pretty much a McDonald's at every exit on the freeway in America, that's, you know, they, they, yeah, they yeah. purpose the real estate business, yeah. that's what they did. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also you're, you're, paying, you're paying into the fact there's no logo on there, there's no line, there's no bloody hashtag, there's no, it's just it's, so confident. What I was going to say is that, you know, one of, the, one of the great things about the medium is the power of context. And I think that that is a, it's, it's sorely missed. Um, on, and that's why, you know, like you're saying, most of the, the roadside ads that you see in the US are, are, are creatively terrible. Oh, they are, aren't um, they? But the power of context elevates everything that you see in the outdoor space. That, that poster does not move. It is, it is actually a piece of real estate. And if you can make something topical or contextual to that location, it always pushes it one step above everything else. And when you add into the mix, the art direction and the copywriting is, is a done uh, deal. And, and I think you, that- you, you just tapped on something, Dan. There was a period of time where well betide you if you touched those arches. Mm. Well betide you. Mm. Mm. Uh, earlier, uh, Leah Bonetti, you'd have, you'd have double arches for double cheese in the mouse holes and all this kind of thing. Really lovely. Um, and then we couldn't, we weren't allowed to touch it. This wasn't really tampering with it. No, it was just cropping it. Yeah. And, and was that? Did you have a tough time getting it no, through? Not at all. No. And, what, all. and was it because? We had a French client. She, I mean, Antoinette was just superb. She but didn't give a shit about anybody rebel. or anything. But also, could you... <laughs> I won't be rebel. told, yeah. yeah. Could you also though, sort of, you know, keep it in a sort of regional thing because it was just those signs, it was in Canada, no one... You know, do you remember that thing you kind of go... No, it's become global now. Yeah, I mean, you, really? could, you okay. could go anywhere. Right. This okay. goes anywhere. No, right, in fact, right. there's a lovely little film, if you watch it, okay. with like Japanese type and... Oh, I think... This, I saw a, a, an amalgamation of posters yeah, from around yeah, the world. Exactly. I will that. put that in. Right. Okay. That that was a fascinating. But also, you know, without without this, we probably wouldn't have had the um, delivery stuff no, you that we looked no, at last talk, year. You well, know, this, that's this, what this I was going to say to you. It's a turning point this, for the brand. This campaign on the floodgates. Very, Very good point, Dan. I mean, I'm, in a way, it's funny because when you type in McDonald's to various awards things, the this and the um, McDelivery stuff come in, yeah. and you go, oh, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. see, eh? Mm. Right, we're gonna um, we're gonna move 
on to your favourite billboard, I think. Wow. Uh, or favourite yeah. billboard. So we always ask people, um, you know, what the, uh, m most people actually go for The Economist. Or there has been some changes lately, which we're very pleased about. And I'm very pleased to say you've gone for something called, well, introduce it to us. I uh, will, yeah. Well, my favourite billboard campaign, it's very nostalgic for me. It was... It was at the time I was doing graphic design at college. Right. I never knew about advertising. I thought Hulvis work was done by the Hulvis client and I never knew there was such a <laughs> yeah, thing as yeah. advertising yeah. agencies. Yeah. However, I used to take down Benson Edges posters in the middle of the night and go and post them in the room in the creative department, in the in the um, college. Right. Like the, the pack coming out of the safe and stuff. I don't know yeah. why, I just got, I was just fascinated by it all. Um, and there was a campaign that, uh, obviously, I was—I think I was 17, and there was a, a, a campaign with just a horse alongside something else. Um, and there was a horse, like, standing there looking at this woman in a leather jacket and tight jeans with this kind of, like, clownish ginger wig looking quite amazing and very stark. Mm. The whole thing was just beautiful. And it just said Scotch and Ginger. Mm. There's no logo, nothing. And I did not know what on earth it was all about. I really <laughs> loved it. And then there was another one with the, the same white horse looking in the mirror, double Scotch. And then there was the same white horse standing alongside a six foot six basketball player, American basketball player, Scotch and American. Yeah, there's loads. And another one with a horse being manicured and brushed and made to look stupendous with the words neat scotch underneath it. Just so minimal, but so beautiful. Yes. And then I found out it was for a, a whiskey called uh, White Horse Whiskey. Mm. And like scotch on the rocks, yeah, this horse. And then of course I ended up at Ligus Delaney. It's my, one of my first agencies I worked at. And who is in the room next to me, but a guy called Graham Norways. Oh. He was the art director who worked with Lester Buckbinder, the photographer. That's and so created cool. this campaign. Wow. Wow. So I was sitting amongst a great, as far as I was concerned. We've got, we talked about Graham Noise on, with our, um, you and Patterson episode. We did. The, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the Carlos thing. But so this was. I don't know, did, did you and Patterson do this with Graham? Or was it, this, no, I think. Was it before Ewan's time? It's before Ewan, I think. I mean, it's a stunning, stunning. So this campaign. is something that really inspired you to go right. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, this. And then I, I, I uh, then a, a couple of guys from FCB came and did a chat at Doncaster College, talking about all these wonderful commercials they'd done. And I just said to the, the uh, college at the time, "Could I do advertising instead of graphics? We don't do advertising here." Really? So I just got, I, I went down to DDB, knocked on the door, and they allowed me in, and I helped do some Volkswagen posters with them. Great. Just, just, just as work as just friends. making a cup of tea and yeah. stuff, you know, with Jeff Senior and all the boys. Wow. It's funny because Barry it, Smith and uh, Peter Harold and wow, it's one of those industries which you don't. Well, it's probably better now. People know. It. Obviously, we're we're very ad friendly in this country. Yeah. But in those days, you, like you said, you thought oh, Hovis would have done that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There wasn't yeah. this bunch of middlemen having a good time and um, being creative and you know talking about. Oh, that's just it's brilliant. Really so I came back to college and I just said I want to change my degree to advertising. We don't do advertising here. I said, can I teach myself? So these guys gave me loads of DNA D annuals and I just used to sit on the toilet and read them <laughs> and, uh, and gave me some briefs. And um, that's that's So would you say that this is one of your favourite posts of all time because it inspired you to... I think this and Benson Edges inspired yeah. me yeah. without a doubt. I mean, it was just like, what is all that about? What drives these people to do that kind of work? Yeah. The, um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? What, what sparks your interest and pulls you yeah. in? Yeah. I remember the. I, I, I was interested to know how you got hold of these images because did you take shots of the shots from the book? Or did you have you got copies of these? I, I managed to track uh, Lester Bookbinder's work down. Right, right. I think he's got a, a website. Wow, that's um, that's great. and I just took some nice, well, the highest res I could possibly They're take. Great. They're great of these, um, but even today, don't they look cool? Oh, they're so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you know what? Absolutely. I'm just thinking of so many campaigns like the, the famous Grouse. Yeah. And they did something with oh, this. Oh, they're very similar, yeah. isn't it? A lot yeah. of work, which has, you know, there's nothing original, isn't there, really? Um, but 
there's some there's a real purity to this. A bit like you know we were talking about. Well, it's characterization of your brand as well. If you've got a character who can live for your brand, it can yeah, it can work without the logo. But little right? did I know at the time that there, the there was white, white horse, horse whiskey. Yeah, but mm. but the, they'd been using the white horse before. Right. Not quite in this kind of style, but right. So much as we'd love to chat on, I think we've done amazing. We've eh? done incredible. Thank you for that. I, I had to stop. I had to stop doing the clock when we got to McDonald's because you know we really wanted to focus on that. We've got our our can special coming up, so that's a really nice segue into the stuff that we're going to be doing in can as well. Yeah, oh, it's been an absolute pleasure, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you so much for coming down and coming in. Yeah, no, mate, it's been wonderful to see you looking so chirpy and 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 lovely. Oh, thank you very much, you Dan. Wow, how do I better the day now? <laughs> Let's go for brunch. Go and have a cream scone. <laughs> yeah, Let's go for a burger and a, and a scone. <laughs> <laughs> burger scone half the time. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah, you're welcome. Cheers, chaps. Thank you again to our amazing guest and to my pod pal, partner in crime, Hugh, for today. Um, Please make sure, (laughs) please make sure that you uh, subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Uh, Keep listening and liking us on social Um, and we'll see you next time.